living in a gospel community. And coming to the Christmas season, we focused in on wishing you and yours a spirit-filled Christmas. Certainly we want you to have a Merry Christmas. But the merriest of Christmases is a spirit-filled Christmas. Brother Norman said something we was praying a while ago. It is true that, in a sense, this is the most wonderful time of the year, but do you realize that at this time of the year, more people are depressed, more people are lonely than at any other time of the year? Because it grips them just how empty life is for many. So we want you to have a Merry Christmas, and, and the merriest of Christmases is, is a Spirit-filled Christmas. And so we've been looking uh, at this passage, and I, if you found Ephesians 5, verses 15 to 21, uh, stand with me if you would. If you don't have a Bible, uh, we're going to put the text on the screen so you can see the Scripture text. We're moving through this, and I'll remind you where we've been and where we're going uh, through the month of December. Follow along as I read, Ephesians 5, 15. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. But be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart giving thanks always for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. What have we just read together? We've read the inerrant, infallible, all-sufficient Word of God. As we focus in today on verse 20, always giving thanks. May the Lord work in us. So that if you came here this morning struggling to give thanks, that you'll be energized by the Spirit to do so. And that we'll all be reminded, just as we've come through Thanksgiving into the Christmas season, there's a sense in which for the true follower of Jesus Christ, it is always Thanksgiving. Thank you. Please be seated. It's great to have Josue with us. We appreciate the Army granting him a little measure of leave from Italy to come home and be with family uh, on, for Christmas. Josue, you have made my Christmas by being with us today. God bless you. We pray for you often, brother. Well, we began December the 1st uh, under this theme, walking wise in evil times, looking at the admonition to keep on being filled with the Spirit. Then we looked on the 8th at the singing to one another, how... Worship is, part of that is singing unto the Lord, singing to one another. We're teaching one another psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, speaking truths of God to one another, encouraging one another that way. Last week, we looked at singing to the Lord. We pointed out to you that, that when you sing to one another, it flows from a heart that is made merry by the Spirit of God. The Scripture teaches that a, that a merry heart, a glad heart, is like good medicine for us. And then today, always giving thanks. Next Sunday, Lord willing, we will look at submitting to one another. If we're going to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, we need to remember He came as a humble servant. He could have come as a king with legions of armies. By the way, He is coming that way second time. But He came as a babe laid into a borrowed manger, a servant. We need to know that, that spirit as well. And so today, giving thanks, always. The Psalms are replete with calls for giving thanks to God. Just real quickly, I want to just... Look at these on the, you might want to jot them down because you can just go and read Psalm 9 and 28 and 30 and 33, 44. Look at all of these. Every one of these Psalms have something about giving thanks. 
many of them begin with a call to give thanks. I want us to see from this text today in the next few minutes the time to give thanks, the matters for which to give thanks, the one to whom we owe thanksgiving, and the name by which we give thanks. Let's unpack this. Giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm 100, which you know if you grew up in church, uh, you memorized Psalm 100 somewhere along the way, probably vacation Bible school. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord all you land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Enter His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him. Bless His name. The psalm anticipates that the people of God will come into His presence, whether that's in your private time, your family time, but especially in corporate worship time. Come into this place with thanksgiving. Did you come that way today? Did you come with thanksgiving? Into His courts, into His presence, with praise. We've just looked the last two weeks at singing to the Lord, singing to one another, knowing the Lord inhabits the praise of His people. And so the psalmist anticipates this. And so the time to give thanks, our text tells us, is always. Well, don't I ever get a break? No. No. Why? Because it's getting you ready for heaven. Now, look, giving thanks always is easy to say. It is difficult to do. Some of you have stood at the graveside of loved ones this past year. Some of you have had family crises, physical, medical, financial, relational. Some of you have struggled emotionally, mentally, struggled spiritually, depression, despair, discouragement. Giving thanks always is easy to say. But you see, it is a challenge that's given to us if we're followers of Jesus Christ. In fact, I would suggest to you that a person whose life is lived habitually not giving thanks, that this command, this challenge, should check them. Say, wait a minute. Why is it so hard for me to get in that groove? But the time to give thanks is always in the morning when you rise. You give thanks because God was pleased to keep you through the night when you rise to breathe. In the day when you labor and you live and, and you enjoy relationships, and you face challenges, give thanks. Because God is the one who has enabled you and has promised you that nothing will come to you that will overcome you. That by His grace and for His glory, He will take you through every trial, through many toils and dangerous toils and trials I have already come. John Newton said, His grace has brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. You give thanks. You give thanks at the end of the day because the Lord has kept you through another day. Maybe you woke up that morning wondering, I know what, something of what I'm facing today. How am I going to get through it? And here you are at the end of the day. Some of you have faced challenges this year where you actually ask yourself, I don't, how am I going to do this? I do not know how I will face tomorrow. Yet because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, all fear is gone. And here you are today as proof that what may have troubled you greatly, God overruled for His glory and for your good. And here you are today. You give thanks when you pillow your head at night. The Lord gives His beloved sleep. If you're able to rest, the Lord has done that. You give thanks when you sit down to eat. We, we support Haitian orphans in Dejan, Haiti. Their food supply has been cut off. Before their food supply, they were, they were grateful and fortunate to have a meal a day. You won't have to wonder about where you're going to 
get your next meal. You give thanks. You see, always, it's always right to give thanks. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 1, 4, I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you. Do you see, you give thanks for one another. You give th I give thanks to God for this congregation. I give thanks when I see someone growing in grace, when I, when I see the Lord stirring someone from lethargy, when I see the Lord sanctifying someone and moving them from one stage of glory to another stage of glory. I, see, I give thanks when I see people facing an overcoming trial, squeezed, and yet what comes out of them when they're squeezed is the precious aroma that offers up praise to Jesus Christ. Paul says, I give thanks. He said in Ephesians 1, verse 16, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. What a challenge. What, I ought to be rebuked when I don't find myself giving thanks for you. We should be rebuked when we're not giving thanks to God for our, for our church family. 1 Thessalonians 1, 2, we give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers. You see, what, what does thanksgiving do? When you have an attitude of gratitude, when you, when you well up with thanksgiving, you remember others. You give, just you make a list of what you're thankful for in other people, how God has blessed you. In ch chapter 5, verse 18, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. You see, in 2 Thessalonians 1, 3, we ought always to give thanks to God for you. Because it's right. It's right. So what Paul says in Ephesians 5, what the Psalms are replete with, he picks up in his other letters, again in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13, we ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers, beloved by the Lord, because God chose you as the first fruits to be saved. Is that your attitude? So when? When do we give thanks? Always. What's, when's, the, when's the time off from that? never the beauty of heaven when we get to heaven we won't have to be prompted to give thanks our glorified bodies our glorified minds will just be caught up in wonder love and praise giving thanks unto god secondly the matters for which we're to give thanks says for everything to god the father in the name of our lord jesus christ for everything even the terrible things that's tough that is tough. And yet, we should see in those things that God is working. Paul says in Romans 8, 28, He's working, does He say He's working all things or some things? All things. Together for good. Well, see, it may not seem good to us. It may not feel good to us. But He is working it all together for good to those whom He loves. <laughs> Now, if you say, well, I, just, I can't see how God's working this for good. Well, maybe maybe, the, maybe your relationship's not where it should be. Because to those He loves, He works all things together for good. To those who love Him, who are the called according to His purpose, to those who see He summoned and saved everything for His glory and for our good. So in everything, always everything. I submit to you that's pretty comprehensive. That's pretty comprehensive. I don't see any wiggle room there. Now, look, if you're sitting there thinking, well, but Pastor, I... I was, I was unthankful on the way to church this morning. Well, you're among family and friends here. Okay? And the remedy to that is just repent. Repent. Dear God, forgive me for not being more thankful. Oh, fill my heart with the remembrances of your goodness to me. Make me more aware of that. We could... We talked about Psalm 9, read Psalm 9 a while ago. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. Oh, I'll recount all your wonderful deeds. You know what you need to set you into motion for Thanksgiving? Giving thanks? Just remember. Just go back through. We sing it. Count your many blessings. Name them one by one. Count your many blessings. It'll surprise you what the Lord has done. And so I just really quickly want to hit some Psalms so that you see how they begin. So hang with me. Let's, let's, let's strap in and go. Psalm 75, 1. We give thanks to you, O God. We give thanks for your name is near. We recount your wondrous needs. 92, 1. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High. 105, 1. O give thanks to the Lord. Call upon His name. Make known His deeds among the peoples. 106. Praise the Lord. O give thanks to the Lord. 
for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Psalm 107. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Isn't that wonderful? The psalmist did not mind repeating himself in another psalm, even the next psalm. Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Is where we are. We're in the company of the upright, the congregation. Are you giving thanks to the Lord with your whole heart? See, this is, this is the lesson. We're going to do the lab in a few minutes. In a few minutes, we're going to open up song books. We're going to look at the screens and we're going to sing. And we're going to sing with thanksgiving. We're going to practice this with my whole heart. Oh, give thanks, Psalm 118. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His steadfast love endures forever. And then Psalm 136. He just can't say it enough. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His steadfast love. You know that whole psalm goes that There's the refrain, all, His steadfast love endures forever. Oh, what a provocation to give thanks. Always. In all circumstances. Finally, the name by which we give thanks. <laughs> Giving thanks always for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ means that you're saying to God, because of the blood and righteousness of Christ and my simple childlike faith in Him, I belong to Jesus and Jesus belongs to me. And because of Jesus dying for me and rising from the grave, I am yours. I am yours. Heaven is my destiny. In the name. Who Jesus is. The eternal Son of God. Who lived a sinless life. Died a sin-bearing, substitutionary death. He bore in His body our sin on the tree. He satisfied God's divine justice by His suffering and dying in our place. And He rose from the grave three days later as an infallible exclamation point for all who put their faith and trust in Him. He is theirs. We are His. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Revelation, the last book in the Bible, tells us this in verse 17, 11, chapter 11, verse 17. We give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, who was, who, who is, who was, for you have taken your great power and begun to reign. What is heaven going to look like? Giving thanks in the presence of the reigning King of kings and Lord of lords. Remember, you see, if you're not familiar with our trappings here, this is a manger. It's empty. We have it empty on purpose. Yes, He was born and placed in something like that. But He grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. He emptied the manger. In the fullness of time, he was hung on a cross. Be there. But he submitted himself, willingly put himself there. Didn't stay there either, though. Emptied the cross. When he emptied the cross, he emptied hell and death and the grave and Satan of any power over his people. Death has no power over us. He was taken down and placed into a tomb. I love what one of my favorite black preachers said years ago. He said he was placed in a borrowed tomb. He didn't need his own tomb. He wasn't going to be there very long. So a borrowed tomb worked just fine for him. Three days was enough. He came out and he emptied the tomb. And he filled heaven again with his glory. And yet he's going to empty heaven again. And this time when he empties heaven, he's bringing the angels with him. Why? Two reasons. To rescue His people and to destroy His enemies. This is our Jesus. We give thanks to You. Oh, is that your heart this season? You see, this next week, you could get every gift you wanted, but if you don't have the gift of Jesus Christ, you've missed it all. 
And you could not get any gift on your list. And yet, if you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have all you need to give thanks now and for all of eternity. Always giving thanks to God in the name of Jesus. Let's pray so we can practice thanksgiving. Dear Holy Father, we bow before you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you. Oh, we thank you for your goodness and mercy. In the fullness of time, you did send your Son as promised in eternity past. And he came. Humble beginnings. And yet everyone who recognized what was going on was in a position of praise and thanksgiving. Oh, Father. Here we are 2,000 years on the other side of the cross and the tomb. Surely, we have experienced so much mercy, so much grace, so much light. Surely we can give thanks in all things, at all times. And Father, I pray for those as we, as we now lift up our voices in praise and thanksgiving. I pray for those sitting here today who do not know Jesus Christ. They're not yet followers of Christ. And I pray that, that they'll be gripped, that their inability, their unwillingness to take up the name will be a, a loving rebuke. It's because they don't have the presence of the Spirit within them. They will not have a Spirit-filled Christmas until the Spirit dwells within them through the new birth. And I pray today would be the day that they would come to know Christ as Lord and Savior. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.